All right, we're getting ready to drill the rear sight block and pin it to the barrel since we've pressed it on. And after I do that, I may actually push the assembly out of the trunnion just to get the trunnion out of my way. And then I'll, I only need this part here to repopulate the rest of it. And I wanted you to no take notice of the hole. You notice just how that one looks a little out around. It's even worse on this side. And I had nothing to do with that. That was from whoever originally installed this gas block on the original barrel of whatever rifle it was attached to back in the day. Like I said, this is a non-matching numbers parts kit. Nothing matches. Doesn't really matter. But some people want all matching. I understand that all. I like having everything matching too, but it's not that big a deal. I mean, it's still going to function fine. I just wanted you guys to see that so when I drill this, you don't look at that and go, wow, look what a horrible hole he drilled in that thing. I had nothing to do with it. But it'll still work. Anyway, if you're going to use a drill press like I'm doing, you're not doing it by hand or whatever, 98% Maybe 99% of these are all going to be true with the bed, the quill here, what holds the chuck in place. This piece here that comes down. But it doesn't hurt to check that just to make sure you know it's a perfect 90 degrees if you're going to be drilling all the way through. As long as you know you can get this level with the bed. I'm going to cheat again and use a V-block, which will actually hold the barrel. I could turn this any way I want to. There's a little clamp here with a brass piece on it that will actually hold it in place. So I could like, spin this around anywhere I want to and clamp down on there and it's going to hold it there and then I can pick up my hole. That way I can make sure everything's perfectly flat or true with the quill and the chuck. That way when I drill through it, it, of course it won't matter now because the holes are already egged in the original part, but I don't want to make it any worse. It will make it a little tougher to put a nice hole on the, in the barrel or a groove in the barrel for the pin to go all the way through because normally your drill bit will actually ride that hole as long as you go slow and make it true. But since our holes are already kind of sloppy, we have to keep our fingers crossed we don't make it worse. We have to go real slow. All right, I got the barrel assembly, everything set up in the little V block here. Got it clocked where I want it because I know that the table is pretty much flat with my uh, drill and everything. You can always check your drill too if you've got something similar to this that has a 90 degree and you know it's flat and true. You can run your, I can't do it here right now because the table's all the way down. But you can run that drill down and then come up here and lightly touch that and look for gaps in between there. And all the little spots. And see if there's a gap in there and you can tell if it's off a little bit. A lot of people will come in and drill halfway through one side, flip the barrel around, come back and drill from the other side. Normally I just drill straight through because I know that basically I can keep everything you know square and true so I don't have to worry about it as much as long as I'm careful. But I'm going to try that since the holes are wallowed out already. I'm going to give that a whirl just going halfway down, flip it over, pick it back up and drill the other side and see if that works any better. I don't know. We're going to find out. All right. Got everything locked in place. You can possibly hold it with your hand or whatever. Just I like to lock mine down if I can. Take the air of myself out of it. Best way to line that hole up and bring your drill bit down. Spin it around like 90 degrees. Make sure it doesn't touch anywhere. Do that several times, lock it down, then recheck it after you lock it just to make sure it didn't move on you. And that's how we get our hole lined up right quick. So let's see if we can get this side done.
will you guys be able to see this, but the hole looks pretty decent. Other than if you look right down here in the bottom, it left a little bitty shoulder where the drill wanted to push off the barrel and cut into this a little bit more. It's not a major, major deal. It is fixable. I think it'll be all right with this one. Like I said, the holes were already wallowed to begin with, and that drill bit's kind of like water. It's going to take the path of least resistance, and obviously it was going towards the sight block instead of staying in the barrel. But the pin, of course I can't push it in, so we should be good. Trying to do this looking through the viewfinder. Of course, this side was the sloppier side. You can't come in and drill these back, you know, weld those back up and put you a whole brand new hole in there or whatever, but this still works. You know, it's not 100% ideal. It will still work. So let's get this thing pinned and do the rest of the barrel. All right, we got the pin in. You can see a little scratch marks on that's fine scratch marks on this one aren't going to matter because I'm going to try to do this one as a battlefield pickup and I want scratches on it I don't want it looking all brand new and pristine I have rifles like that I want this one to look like it's been used and abused the whole reason I did all this backwards normally I would populate put everything in sandblast it and parkerize it and possibly paint it and it would look pristine like it just brand new off the assembly line this one I want to look like it was used and abused, dropped on a battlefield, thrown in a box, and shipped right over. At least that's the hope anyway. So let's get the rest of this done. Alright, we're ready to press on the gas block and get that drilled and pinned in place. Always make sure you put this on your lower handguard retaining ring before you do this. You'll be hating life if you put this, don't put this on, press this in place, and then drill and pin it. Now all we can do is press it on and realize that, that hand guard retaining ring getting on there, it's not that big a deal. Just press this right back off right quick. But you don't want, once you drill and pin this, you kind of want to leave it. Because then you'll most likely going to need oversized pins and all that stuff. And a lot of people don't have drill rod, you can use drill bits, that works. But just try to remember to put this on. In order to do this, you're also going to need the gas tube. If you'll notice, the gas tube has a lip on it right here. Inside of here, there's a notch. Make sure you line that up inside of there. Make sure it goes down in there. You'll notice the hand guard and everything all matches up with the gas tube ring. Make sure that that's in that slot before you do all this because you're going to press this thing down until it meets up to there and you can get it out without having to pry it out but it fits in there and just snaps down in there real good and locks in place. Let's get that done right quick. Alright, I got it set up in a little plate here to press it down in the press. Not be able to see this big gap in here. That's how far we've got to move this thing. And I used my uh, one, two, three blocks and the little surface table I got to make sure that this was level. A lot of you guys don't have that, but like I said, try to find anything you can with straight edge, you know. Eyeball it best you can, whatever, but I can cheat a little bit since I have some precision tools to make sure it's straight. Anyway, like I said, make sure that you put this gas tube a little lip in there, make sure it's inside of there. You don't have to have it in there the whole time you're pressing it down, but once you start getting close, you need to start putting it in there and checking it. Make sure you can get it where you want it. You only want to do this once. I've had to move some before. Because I didn't have the gas block, or the gas tube, excuse me, in the right spot. I don't know what I was thinking, but I... Anyway, I had to come back, push the pins out, push it back a little bit, redo it, oversize the holes, put new pins in. It's not, it's not a big deal, it's a little bit of a headache, but 
one of them learning experiences. The more of these you do, the more you realize what to look for, but each one is totally different. You have a problem um, with this one up here, the next one you do, maybe a problem down here, maybe a combination of both. You just never know what you're going to get into with these things. Let's get all this put in place. Rotating around, so y'all can see it hopefully. Okay, each time you pull down on that the handle, that thing needs to move. If it's not moving, you need to stop. You, these barrels are pretty tough. They're designed to bend and flex a little bit, and I'm going to stress the little bit. You can screw one of these up, and these barrels aren't cheap anymore. Well, it'd be $150 plus shipping by the time you, you make this screw up, get it replaced. So be very careful. comes out halfway decent. You don't want to have to be fighting this thing. Of course, being a non-matching kit, I'll most likely have to come in here and re-grind just a little bit so the locking lever will actually lock up. Because right now it's not wanting to. It's it's up against it tight, which is fine. It's better than loose. But not being a numbers matching kit, we'll have to address this issue next, I guess. All right, we got the gas block drilled and pinned now. I actually use the press, to press them in. I get tired of beating on these things. Next, you notice that doesn't look right. I just got it set on there. Of course, I use my persuader, kind of tap it down on there so it doesn't just flop all around on it. You can eyeball these if you want, use parallels on the flat piece or whatever. What I like to use is laser bore, a laser light. It goes right inside the bore, Twist it a little bit, it locks up inside there. It's got a little man plastic mandrel in the back of it. Goes inside the flutes and as you twist it, it opens up and locks in place. Gets that laser nice and centered in that barrel. And then all you gotta do is make sure you put your rear side in. If you're doing it in the garage like me, which means you're only doing about 10, 15 yards, put it in about five or 600 or whatever until you can see easily the top of your sight post and then where the laser is on your wall and then you can clock this thing in using the persuader or hammer or whatever mallet soft mallet kind of bump it in where you want to then you can press it on get it in place but I will not drill and pin this after I press this on and that's because I'm going to shoot it to make sure that it is in line and everything it hits point of aim point of impact Sometimes these things will have canted front sights for a reason. It will be canted on purpose to make up the difference because the barrel might shoot slightly off-centered because sometimes the trunnion does not fit inside the receiver perfectly straight. Sometimes the barrel is not inside that receiver perfectly straight. So I like to go shoot, make sure everything's where I want it because I really like for my sight post to be in the middle, not way off to the side. That just jacks with your sight picture when you're trying to shoot stuff. I like mine to be right dead in the center if I can keep it that way. I mean even doing this I may have to make a fine adjustment here and there. It's no big deal. But I won't drill and pin this until after I've gone and shot it. Alright we're going to press on the uh, front sight block. I've got it clocked pretty much where I want to with my laser. 
you want to make sure you have your uh, whatever muzzle brake or device you're going to put on the end of it. Make sure you have that handy too so you can check. This one's a Tapco. It has two different detents in it for a right or a left-handed shooter. It's also a 922R compliant part. You always want to be able to check it periodically and make sure you're not going to you have clearance for your barrel and the threads and everything to go past. You don't want to be pressing onto this thing. Next thing you know, the barrel bumps into your flat piece you've got on here. <laughs> You're going to be in a world of hurt when you do that. You're going to be replacing your barrel. Make sure you got plenty of clearance. I know that's not sticking out far enough, but I'll check it anyway. actually matches up perfect with the hole, but I'm not done because there is a little flat in here or a boss or a shoulder. You can tell pretty much how far it needs to go in there, just a little bit at a time. We got the front sight pressed on. Like I said, we're not going to drill or pin it until we shoot it, make good and sure everything's where it needs to be. This thing was extremely tight. Like I said, your barrel will bend if you're not careful. It will flex a little bit when you press it, and that's all right, but be very diligent, be very cautious when you do this. I don't want to press it on anymore. It's almost in place, but I'm not comfortable with putting any more pressure on it. As you can see, it's already almost set up for this Tapco left-handed notch. But we'll go in here and we're going to cheat a little bit with the old file. You can see it's got some... I need to clean it. <laughs> we'll come in here and we'll baby the back side of this thing. Give it a little loving right back here. Get it to where it fits. This is high-tech stuff right here, I'm telling you. It doesn't take as much as you think sometimes. I move it quite a bit. Of course, now if you're saying that, it didn't move hardly at all. Let's try to keep it as straight and level as possible. Now it's dead perfect for the left-handed shooter. Problem is I'm right-handed, so we gotta get it around to there. So we may incorporate a little pneumatic assistance. There we go. It just barely clocks past that hole enough to where the pin wouldn't go in and out. That'd be perfect. And once you... That's beautiful. I don't know if the light is showing or not. It's kind of hard to tell. But it will still work with the left handed shooter also. That's what we want. Now what we got to do is press the barrel out of the trunnion, start riveting the trunnions into the receiver and get this thing put together and go to the range. Well, let's press this out of the trunnion, shall we?
Good thing there's brass on there, huh? That brass will get out way before anything else does. Alrighty. There we go. Alright, we got a non matching numbers part kit here and of course the little angle that they grind in here doesn't want to jive with our sight block, rear sight block. Goes in good. Doesn't want to lock up. So we're going to have to come in here and Take a little off this little ramp here, a little angle, just a bit. You can just start to see marks on it. Use our little file here. Try that out, and if that doesn't seem to want to work, well then we'll go a little bit more persuasion. Let's try this out. Let's go from this way. some heavy persuasion we've almost got it still want to fine-tune it by hand you might be able to still see some of the marks on there just leaving little indentations where that thing's touching so continue to do this right quick Sucker. Went through here. Flap, I think, is that because there ain't. Yeah, that sucker's on there. If you have a hard time getting these off instead of just using pliers or whatever, if you have a cleaning kit, you notice there's a big old slot right here. That will actually go into the little lip there and you can just open it right up in case anybody didn't know that some of you probably already do I think that'll work right there you can still see where it's got nice contact on it it's all up high it's not off on one side so I think we're good <laughs> 